What is up, got your game family? Right now, I do not know if I'm in the frame of the list. I got my phones just propped up on the counter. That's besides the point. Because today, it's been about close to a week, four or five days. I'm not sure exactly how long. I think it's about like four or five days since the tank's been up, running by itself. But if you guys remember, we got the live bacteria sand in there. I added some of my media balls in here. So that's got live bacteria from the 20 gallon tank in there. And we got our rock in there that shouldn't have had nothing to it. But today I thought it'd be a great day to test out the API saltwater fresh slush fresh water test kit. So I can show you guys how that works, how we gonna test it. And so you guys can know when your tank is also ready for testing. Basically, your fish get in the tank, you have pH and all that in your water right now. Fish get in the tank when they eat and when there's uneaten food in the tank, that's waste, which turns into ammonia. So now the ammonia gets eaten by the bacteria in your tank. That's why we need the bacteria or the live bacteria in the tank. The ammonia gets eaten by the bacteria and turns that bacteria into nitrite. Now nitrites in your tank, and then there's another bacteria in your tank that eats up the nitrite and turns the nitrite into nitrate. Nitrate and ammonia, if it's too much of it, or it might be nitrate, but if there's too much of all those, it becomes poisonous for the fish, which means dead. Your fish die, you have ammonia spice, you get an allergy bloom, you get all types of problems in your tank that you don't one and once it does that full process that means your tank is ready for fishes and all these numbers you want to be at zero your ph probably won't ever be at zero but everything else you kind of want you want at zero if it's at like five ppms it's safe to put fishes in it but you know that's your call to make i'm gonna tell you the right way and it's supposed to be at zero but when i started my first tank there were not zeros and the salt water this is how you test if things go wrong. If you don't have a fish that's not eating, all the fishes are acting weird, or stuff just doesn't seem to be going right, then nine times out of 10, one of your levels is probably off, and that's where these handy dandy test tubes come into play. So the first step that you wanna do right now is you're just gonna uncap them. I already pre-rinsed mine before I uh, always start, uh, they're always rinsed out before I start doing this again to a new tank. We don't care. Let me tell you. <laughs> All right, guys. So you guys can see right here, this is five milliliters in this cup, in this test tube, I guess you could say. So we're going to fill each of them up right now to that point because that's where they all need to be at. And the best way to do that is you can just literally hold them like this, take one of them, dip them inside the tape, and then pour it in there. See, that's just a little bit above the line. We gonna call it good. <laughs> and then we'll do it to, again to the next two so they all got the same amount. Okay guys, so now we got our test tubes all set up and now we're gonna start with the first one, which is the high range pH. I always shake the bottles up real quick, about 30 seconds. Yeah, some of you guys shake it for like two minutes prior. But then this one, you just gotta add five drops to one of the tubes, and then we're gonna cap it. So we just take the first one and we just keep that way. We got it in order. So you just flip it. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. Bam. And then you just invert the tube a couple times. So just literally clap, cap it, and just get that color. And your pH is done. You let that sit. Usually this color right here would tell you how much pH is in your tank already. But you just for safe for safe sake, we're gonna keep it right here and let it sit for five minutes. And just remember that's your pH. And typically once you get all your measurements, you wanna write down and you wanna do your test always at the same time every day. So today for me is Monday, it's like eight something. So I would want to write my test down. And if you ever get confused, you got your saltwater master test kit right here. And so we just did the pH right here. It tells you the directions. 
And now we're testing the ammonia. So for the ammonia, they want us to do five millimeters. You add some of the solution one, which I believe is this one. Yeah, eight drops of this, and then you add eight drops of the second one. And then you shake it. All right, so shake up the first solution bottle. They want eight drops of it in here. Completely turn it upside down and just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom, drops in my testing tube. <laughs> in my testing tube. And then we gotta get the other one. So that's done. We'll put that back. And then we get our other one, bottle number two. Add eight more. So then grab our tube again. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Drop, ready to drop you down, no? And then you just put in our tube, shake for five seconds, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five. Bam, you see that color already coming in? That's your ammonia test right there. Bam, pH ammonia done just like that. Snappity doo dot quick, snippity doo bop bop bee bop boop. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing, you know? Just like that, easy. Now, if you wanna follow the directions again, you turn the page. Now we're gonna be testing for nitrite, okay? So for the nitrite, we're gonna come here and we're gonna add our bottle solution for number one. So let's add our five. One, two, three, four, five. Cap, the cap. Shake it for five seconds. Bam, look at that, already there. There's our nitrate. Remember, we gotta let these all sit for five minutes. But by the time you can do all of them real quick and then just let them all sit for five minutes, you should be good. So now that's it. We're already three fourths of the way done. We're already on the last one. Real simple, real easy stuff here. So now we turn the page and we are officially on the last part of our cycle, nitrate. Now to test for your um, nitrate, you're gonna have to take your, your solution number one bottle right here. And then we're gonna have to add 10 drops of it and then we're going to have to invert the test tube for at least 30 seconds. So you can see the nitrite, nitrate is where it gets serious because this, you need to be accurate and you need to make sure the nitrate is completely gone before you can add fish it. Because like I said, too much, your fish will die. So let's go ahead and add our 10 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 10 drops just like that. And now we got to break the tube for at least 30 seconds. So just count my head for this. And then make sure I read the directions so I tell you the right stuff here. Then after that, we have to vigorously shake. Oh, <laughs> I didn't have to switch that for 30 seconds. My bad, y'all. We have to vigorously shake the next bottle 30 seconds. This one. Bam, 30 seconds. And then we add another 10 drops. And then we have to shake the bottle in there for one minute. So let's add our 10 drops. Bam, 10 drops. And now this has to get shaken for a minute. So I'll, let you, I'll skip to when I'm done with that, but. Bam, and we're done with that. And that is our color so far. But now remember, we have to sit and wait for five minutes. But for sure, by now, it's been five minutes since we did our first test. So for the pH, your ideal thing you wanna be for pH here is you wanna be at a 7.4, it's a yellowish, brownish color. Mustard color, I would say. A 7.8 is pretty okay too. We look like we are 
7.8 to me. Maybe an 8. Maybe we're, we look more like an 8, but when I hold it to the light, it looks like a 7.8. So the pH is not too bad. No complaints there. So the ammonia, we need it to be at least a 0.25 for it to be considered safe-ish, safe. But we really want it at a zero. I can tell you right now, looking at this, when I put it to the light, our ammonia is looking like a 0.25, maybe 0.50. Yeah, for sure, our ammonia is looking like a 0.25. That's that's pretty good with me. For the tank only being up four or five days. Now we're on to nitrite. We need nitrite to be at a zero or 0.25 to be considered safe. I'm gonna have to look at the light for the nitrite. This is zero on nitrite with that little light. Looks like a pretty definite zero to me. It don't look like no 2.5, so our nitrites are good. And then it's on to nitrate. Hey, so you have a saltwater tank and when it starts, you get to all of these levels, but trust me, once you're actually in it, your, your pH, your nitrate and all that, they're gonna drop down and up and up and down. Nothing's gonna stay perfect and be perfect for the whole entire ride through, okay? So just let you guys know that. So now it should have been five minutes or so for our last but not least, nitrate. So nitrate, this is what it wants it to be at, zero. This is where sometimes mine is usually at 5.0. Sometimes, you know, you never can tell. This looks pretty dark right here in this lighting. Oh, it looks actually light. It looks like a 5.0. And there you have it, guys. The nitrate is actually at a 5.0. I just smashed off in a 5.0, and it's a coup. Hey, it, it's a coup. Vroom, vroom on this plant. But yeah, 5.0, baby. You know what that means? That means if I was really, if I was really willing to risk it for the biscuit, we could possibly get tanked we could possibly go and get fishes for this tank. You'll see in the next video, cause sometimes I'm impatient with these things, but those are really good levels for the tank to be five, far or five days old. And that's only because there's live sand in there and I added my own media balls. If I didn't add none of that, the cycle will just be beginning. That's why it's a good idea to get live sand instead of just dry sand because if you just get dry sand and you get dry rock and you have no other media balls when it's your very, very first, first, first saltwater take, these levels will take for about a month before you can actually start seeing like, okay, the biological filter is being built and established. But you do want your biological filter to be like very, very well established before you start overloading it with fishes and doing all that. So if you really can't wait my suggestion would be get some hardy fishes like a damsel, a uh, clownfish, or a yellow watchman goey. Put them in there and let that establish. Let that just kind of be there for a little bit. And it's just take your time. I know it's exciting. I know you want to get all the fishes at once. But just take your time. Enjoy the tank. And just enjoy the ride. All right? But... That is it for this video, you guys. That's how you do a saltwater test on your fish tank. And that's how you test when, whenever you got algae in your tank, an algae outbreak, you just do that test. And it will tell you, you'll definitely see which one of your levels is all the way down here or something. When it's there, it's time for immediate action, like a water change, or go out and buy something that's like nitrate lowering level media, ammonia lowering level media. There's all types of things out there you can get to help you if you are struggling with that. But thank you for watching, you guys. Next up, we add fishes to the 30 gallon tank, baby. Make sure you guys smash that like button. It helps me get this video to people like you and other people wondering how they can start a saltwater fish tank or how to even test their saltwater tank to begin with. And make sure you guys subscribe to come to make sure you guys subscribe for more banging content and make sure you guys share with your friends. Help get the word out. Helps me out tremendously. Memory, you don't have to do none of that. That's just if you a real one. If you the real gotcha gang family. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Sure.